Over the years, different kinds of spots have made an indelible mark in different ways for different reasons. Let's just start with the obvious that everyone's gonna say, which of course is going to be 1984 from Apple, what's up from Budweiser, and where's the beef from Wendy's. Where's the beef? You can go back and look at the boldness of Apple's 1984 spot, and you still kind of have to include that in that list of all-time greats. All classic, all amazing, but I'm telling you what no one's gonna say that had the three most important things in the spot was Puppy Monkey Baby from Mountain Dew. It has a puppy, a monkey, and a baby, so it wins. Puppy, monkey, baby. There have been these new ways that brands and agencies have gotten more inventive. My real favorite has to go to 2018, the tide work with David Harbour, where you see all of these little snippets of what appears to be other ads, but then he sort of interrupts with like, nope, this is a tide ad. No, tide ad. Each of those little spots was amazing in how it intersected Tide with this other brand, whether it's Old Spice or it's a beer brand or it's Mr. Clean, and you loved the way that they showed up together. I think we all kind of sat forward when we're like, wait, is this gonna be a... Yep, it is a Tide ad, and you loved that it was. Eyes, Lips, Face, Sticky by Elf Cosmetics was such a unique snapshot of what was happening in culture at the time. We literally cast the stickiest person in culture, Jennifer Coolidge. We were able to actually tap into something that she said on the red carpet just a few weeks prior. I've always wanted to play a dolphin. We knew that dolphin skin was trending in beauty. That Power Grip primer created this universe where it was playing a character that Jennifer was playing alongside, and she was getting stuck to all of these outrageous things. And that kind of super sticky power was something that people really remembered. Double Take by Monster.com was one continuous shot that starts in this really high-end conference room and there's like a very wealthy looking businessman at a desk and then the camera passes through the wall. We see the back end of the moose that was above his desk and there's a worker guy sitting underneath the physical ass of that giant moose. It was actually one of a series of amazing ads that stood up on the Super Bowl. The formula for Super Bowl is not to be lulled into thinking that you can follow a formula and call it a day. What works is being simple, smart, and funny. What doesn't work is when people see you trying to be simple, smart, and funny. The Super Bowl is a stage for creativity, has just gotten more and more competitive. And so these days, I think you really do have to show up in a surprising way. It's the perfect place for populist humor. So big, inclusive jokes that most of America are gonna get. And it's a great time to use celebrities. When a brand leads with casting before creative, sometimes you only really remember the talent and not necessarily the brand or the purpose or the product. So I think the creative has to really come first and then the casting has to then take it to a whole other level. The story you tell has to be a refreshing or new kind of point of view. The Super Bowl spot that Coors did in 2023, they had this opportunity to engage consumers in the lead up to the game. And so they partnered with DraftKings and they allowed people to bet on which beer was gonna be featured. So the film itself, epic battle between Miller and Coors, and of course the rug pull at the end, it's actually a blue moon spot, was a really delightful way to show up. If I had to sort of think back to the most breakthrough work, it would be the trend of brands hacking old media. We saw that with Oreos dipping in the dark, but in more recent years, we've seen even more breakthrough work. And if you look at what Coinbase did, if you look at what Reddit did, and if you look at a brand like Tubi did with the interface of the television itself, that's the kind of work that has you questioning the reality that you're in in the moment. There were two Tubi spots in the Super Bowl. The one with the rabbits, psychotic and dark and weirdly wonderful. But the moment we all talked about was when they brought up the fake menu screen and scrolling through to change the channel. Every one of us had that moment of yelling at someone for sitting on the remote. And I think that this was a really brave, memorable way to get people's attention. He kind of had this feeling of like, oh, you got me to be, <laughs> which is awesome. Like that kind of sticks with people. There's no doubt that the Super Bowl is such a destination for watching the advertisements. People are tuning in for the commercials as much as they're tuning in for everything else. So we all talk about what makes a successful Super Bowl ad. and. 
Each and every time it's creating emotion. But the most successful are those that provoke a shared experience for everyone in the room that you're watching it with. People want to be surprised and delighted. People are really moved by things they weren't expecting to see and could never have predicted. That's the stuff that becomes memorable and that we want to talk about long after the game. That's the kind of heart and mind that you want to own.